Welcome everybody. Welcome back to Homestead Heart. And today I am outside planting one of my favorite melons. Y'all, I've already gotten some melons planted. And I'm going to tell you like the Maju Rajasthan honey melon. I hope I'm saying that properly. But this is a new melon for us that we've never tried. It did come from Baker Creek. Let me see if I can find that packet. Now this is another one, the Petite Gras de, de Rennes or something. This is a French variety right here that we're trying. But this one, yeah, this one is from Rajasthan, India. Oh, there you go. And so I'm, ex I'm excited to, I'm excited to see how this melon tastes because this is a melon variety that does very, very well in hot conditions. So I'm excited to try to grow this particular melon. And if, and I'm gonna plant it in a location separate from others, because I do wanna try to save the seeds from these. If it does well here, the flavor is said to have been impeccable. And then the heat tolerance of this melon is also said to be good. And one of the things that I'm going to tell you is that that I'm trying to get into the habit of focusing on things that are heat tolerant, right? And the reason being is because for our uh, climate, for our zone, it's very hot and humid here in the South, okay? And in the state of Georgia. So it's very hot and humid here. And so to be able to find varieties that we would actually enjoy eating while at the same time having them to become more and more acclimated to our zone that's what we're going for but if we can come across varieties that are already heat tolerant that's exactly what we are going for so i have already planted these i planted some banana melon now these banana melon yeah, these banana melons, we got these from Hudson Valley Seed Company. And the, bana the banana melon, it says it on the packet, when ripe, its sweet scent might just remind you of the tropics. Mild, distinctive flavor and luscious papaya-like texture. Not that it tastes like a papaya, but it has the texture of a papaya. So I'm excited to see what this banana melon is going to taste like here. But in the meantime and in between time, I've already done the honeydew melon and I'm getting ready to pop in a few seeds for the Belly's Best cantaloupe. And I've already pre-moistened my soil here. And I'm just gonna put about four seeds in each one of these, okay? Ah, I got a few too many in there. I'm gonna have to add another cup probably. But yeah, probably gonna have to add another cup. But in any case, I am adding those. But you all, the one that I'm most excited about, damn, <laughs> is this canary melon. Y'all, look, if you've never had a canary melon before, Try your local farmer's market. See if you can find a canary melon. I can't, look, I love this. Out of all the ones that I'm growing that I have tasted before, this canary melon is um, every melon that I've ever grown. These types of melon, like, you know, rock melons, like cantaloupes and whatnot. Any kind of melon like that that I've grown before, I've never tasted one that compares to the canary melon. So I'm excited to try these and get these in the garden. And I am gonna try to plant them all far enough apart so that I can save some of the seeds. And I'm putting about four seeds in each one of these. Okay, just four. And I'm just gonna position them to where they're just not piled on top of each other but that they, that they do have um, a little room in between to germinate, give them some space. 
This one has five in it, but that's okay. See that? Give them just a little bit of space to germinate. I've already pre-moistened this. So what I'm gonna do now is just grab some potting mix. And the potting mix that I am using is the Kellogg's Raised Bed Potting Mix. And I'm just gonna, did I plant this? Oh, I did not plant that other canary melon. Where is it? I got one more cup for the canary melon. I'm starting four cups of these. Now, let's get these babies spaced out. And then I'm just gonna come over the top with just a little bit of potting mix and give it a little pat down. Might have been a little too much. Gotta grab some more. And I dumped this Kellogg's potting mix into one of my 17 gallon containers to make it easier for me to get the mix and put everything in these cups. All right, now, now that I've, and this right here is just an extra cucumber that I've already planted, but <laughs> let me show y'all what I've done here. This will be easier for me to do it this way. I'm gonna show y'all what I'm doing. I'm moving these over because I've been using pretty much the same water to get my plants my seeds going right pretty much the same water that if it drains out and it's enough then all i'm doing is just reusing okay and that's it see all that water in there i wasn't gonna pour all that water out so wrong cup yeah so to make this easier for me I'm just taking some water from these cups. Can y'all see? Yeah. And I'm just pouring it in. Just pouring some into each one. And the good thing about this is that The more I water this to kind of make sure that all of the peat moss that's in these cups, that they are saturated. All that happens is, you know, the more you water it, or, or when you first water it, the, the next time around, it's not going to be quite as much water that, as you, that you would have left over, if you understand what I'm saying. I'm trying to talk while I'm doing this at the same time. <laughs> okay. So basically what I'm saying is not as much water is going to drain through because I've already pre-saturated some of these, most of these. And that's just helping this to um, make sure that my seeds germinate by pre-moistening this soil here because you all, it takes so long to get peat moss to soak up water it takes a minute for that to soak up water so that's why i don't mind pre-moistening first see look at this cup <coughs> hey settle down out there rainy you and grizzly i don't mind see how that's kind of liquidy on top that's because it's going to take a few minutes for that peat to soak up that water even though i pre-moistened it already okay so I'm not gonna waste this space. I have room for two more cups here. And I guess I can choose to do, hmm, I don't know. 
I got it. I think I got enough cantaloupe. Well, I could go ahead and do another cantaloupe and do also another honeydew melon. But that canary melon, you all, this is the one that I'm most excited about. And I'm going to tell you something. On these containers, I write the date on these so that I can know like how long it takes for these to germinate. You know, if I put the date on here, 313, and I know that it's gonna take these anywhere from 10 to 12 or 14 days for these to germinate, then I know when to expect it, right? And so that's why, and I watered this and it's still dry on the top. And so this is why I write the seed starting date on here. And then I'm also gonna go back and write the expected germination date on the other side too because it can be difficult to remember them all when you have a lot of starts going, okay? So this is that canary, and I even put the spacing on here so that if somebody is helping me plant, they'll know that this melon has to be planted two feet apart from the other, and most of them do, with the exception of the banana melon. So if you plant this banana melon, the banana melon needs about four feet of spacing in between plants. You wanna give them plenty of room to grow and spread out and to tell the truth if you got the space for whatever your melons are whether they be cantaloupes or honeydews whatever you're growing give them as much room as possible to spread out and grow so if you can give them about three feet or four feet of spacing great give it to them Mrs. Puff, you could have came through the front door. That's why I left the door open. That's why I left it open. See what I'm saying? They come right here, wherever I'm at in the greenhouse. And they like to be right above my head. That's ridiculous. Anyway. Girl. Anyway, you all. So, that's what I would recommend. If the most space that you got to offer for your melons, if you can, give it to them, okay, you all? Give them as much space as you can allow for them to grow, all right? Now, I think that's gonna do it for the melon. I have shared so much with you all in the seed starting. I have already started so many. Watermelon, now melon, and I've already done the cucumber tray as well. And I'm going to do another video, y'all, about these cups and telling you all why I prefer this size, okay? Because you do have multiple sizes when it comes to starting with these cups. But I'm going to do another video telling you all why I prefer this, okay? When it comes to the end. The thing about them, though, is that for this... Mrs. Puff, you are playing too much. Okay. Y'all better stop now. <laughs> you better cut out. Okay, so you all, I'm going to do that video coming up next. Come down for now. That's Snoops. At least he came inside. Thank you, Snoops. At least he came inside. So, you all that's going to do it for melons starting all of my melons are done like i said i am going to go ahead and add another honeydew and cantaloupe to this just so that my tray is completely full i don't know i might do another canary melon because i'm kind of really like wanting this canary melon so bad but i'm, I'm gonna probably go ahead and do the honeydew and the cantaloupe yeah and just get those started okay but until these are ready to go in the ground which is not going to be for several weeks after my last frost we are expecting some below freezing temperatures here tonight okay so you all that's going to do it for this video if you haven't done so already go ahead and give our video a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos we upload to our channel and thank you all again for watching homestead heart Peace and blessings to each and every one of you, and I'm going to see y'all in the next video. Remember, y'all, grow your groceries. <laughs>